I'm very excited to do this tutorial because this is something I have tried to figure out for years. UV mapping a fluid, something that is changing, its topology is changing. This is the secret to melting objects with their texture, lava flowing, stuff like this. This tutorial is brought to you by Squarespace, but we are going to talk about that later. So I'm going to have an object melting, like let's say we have a Suzanne. I'm just going to run a, a quick fluid, which gives us a simulation like this. All I want to do is I want to make it more of a melting rather than kind of like a splashing. So I'm going to bring up the domain. Really all we need is the area, like immediately next to Suzanne. You want to make sure that mesh is enabled so that it's actually calculating a mesh. Notice that this is a changing topology thing. The number of vertices is changing. In mesh, click use speed vectors. If you don't do this, it's not going to work. You can see for every single vertex in the thing, it's going to give a velocity value, which basically tells you how fast is each part of the fluid moving. This is what, if you get this issue of blackness, that's just because you need a cache. And I found that a uni cache seems to solve a lot of the issues. And let's have this go for 75 frames. Make sure that's the same with the simulation. And now to have a melting simulation, just just go into diffusion, click high viscosity solver. Viscosity means how honey is it? Weird description, but okay. And now you can see that it melts more so. You can make this a little less intense. This number actually matters quite a bit, so we're going to want to remember it. I'm just going to change the simulation so that it starts kind of like this. And I'm going to consider this done. How in the fuck are we going to UV map this? Well, first of all, I'm going to run a higher quality simulation. Just same thing. To bake, make sure you just save your file somewhere and click bake. Okay, so now we have a high resolution simulation. That looks pretty good. If we have a coordinate system on the first frame, which is fine, we can take every single point on the surface, which represents a coordinate, and then move it along this velocity vector so that the coordinates basically advect, they stick onto the surface over time. But let's actually do that. So I'm going to add in a proxy object for all our like simulation stuff. And this is going to inherit the fluid simulation. So import in a relative liquid domain, which is our simulation. And on the first frame, let's just apply a bunch of points, which you can think of as coordinates. Well, this is fine, but every single frame, it's going to change, right? So to start off, I'm going to use a Poisson disk uh, distribution, which lets me pick a very high number of points, but also kind of make a distance between them, a minimum distance so that none of them are overlapping, which is pretty important for not having a flickering coordinate system. And then we want to only have this on the first frame and then it vect move with the surface. Of course, I'm going to run a secondary simulation, a simulation zone on top of the liquid simulation. And I'm just going to import in these coordinates, which will just look like it's not doing anything because we've imported in our coordinates and then have done nothing to it. What I can do is on every single frame, I want to move these coordinates. So if I move them down a little, then they're going to do that. In fact, for every single point, I can say, look at the liquid, what area are you closest to in the liquid, inherit that velocity, and then move in that direction. A pretty abstract idea, but let's make this real. We're going to sample the nearest surface. We're going to import that in. And what I care about, what information I want to extract is velocity. This is what I'm going to offset the position by. And it's not going to inherently work, but if I play this now, you can see at least it's doing something that kind of resembles our simulation, like it's spreading apart. What this implies is that it is moving, but by way too much as compared to our fluid simulation right? They don't stick together. Now, this is where that number from before comes in. Remember, we had this high viscosity solver of a strength of 0.01. This is important because we do have our speed vectors, but they're way too strong. So what we can do is we can scale it by a number that's not necessarily 0.01, but very close to it. So let's say we scale by 0.01 to begin with. It's still not perfect, but at least it's trying to flow with the mesh. This number should be something near, if not exactly 0.05. And look at that. I wonder if it's always 0.05 or if that's just an approximation. I believe it is 0.05. So it's kind of weird. Like, why do we care about this? We care because now we have points that can store coordinates, like they can store anything, and they move with the surface, coordinates moving with it, and then send it back into the fluid. I know, what am I talking about? Well, on the very first frame before we go into the simulation zone, let me store some kind of coordinate. And this can be UV coordinates, it can be whatever. For my purposes, I'm going to store the initial position, and I will call this coordinates, and then make sure to simulate. So if you look at our points, we have our velocity, but we also have our coordinates. This is what I want to view, so let's look at that. And you can see we have a initial coordinate system that now moves with it. Okay, so now are you seeing what the idea is? We have our coordinate system that now we can send back into the mesh. So I'm going to need our liquid domain and I want to sample the nearest point that has the coordinates. So I'm looking at the simulation and I'm going to sample. What I care about is the attribute we made called the coordinates and we need to know what index. In other words, which point should I pull the coordinates from? Well, that should just be whichever one is the closest. Sample nearest, I think that's the one. So make sure this is set to point. This is going to be our index. You can see we have our initial position and then it flows with it, right? It's looking a bit janky, but this is kind of the idea. So before we go any further, let's just like use this thing in a uh, shader. So I'm going to store named attribute this time for the fluid. I'm going to call this one coordinates again, pulling coordinates from the simulation back onto the fluid. If I set a material, so we're going to have it use the default material, I can bring in our coordinate system as an attribute. So again, this is our coordinates, but because it's a coordinate system, I can apply it to any texture. In this case, it's a three-dimensional thing. So I'm going to apply it to a checkerboard. So it flows with it. And I will talk about how to make this less kind of glitchy. One good way to do this is instead of point, we can store these coordinates inside the 
edge, which all of a sudden makes this seem a bit cleaner, at least to me. And you can try some fancy stuff like taking the coordinate from the simulation and just kind of averaging it out a bit so we can blur this attribute. But you can see this is without and this is with. It definitely adds some stability, but technically it will make it inaccurate. We can actually do a bit better. Instead of just having our points move with the thing, there is going to be kind of like a slight inaccuracy. So you can see these points like kind of start off correct, but then they, eh, they kind of go into the mesh. What we can do is we can advect along the velocity vector, but when we're done with that, we can make sure that these points should go back onto the surface. Going to set position, find the nearest surface of our fluid, and this time I want to snap it onto the position. So I'm just going to put this here that just makes sure it stays on the surface, and now look at that. At least as good as we're going to get, it seems. Of course, the reason this doesn't look perfect is we need a higher resolution simulation, but also we're kind of doing the worst case scenario where there are these clean lines in the checkerboard, which makes it hard to like, you know, get it perfect when you can see the glaring issues. Much better than this is to use a more organic texture. So I'm going to use a noise texture, again, using this as the coordinate system. And let's make sure that this is higher contrast. I'm going to decrease the scale so it's kind of like a bigger phenomena, so something like that. In this case, since we don't need precision, I'm going to go back to point. And I just want to mention that this works with the underside where you can really see the spilling over here. Like that looks super nice to me. Finally, let's add a bit of detail, maybe a bit of roughness, and look at that. Beautiful. I'm going to use this as a normal map, which the normal map sticks onto the surface, at least reasonably well. Kind of has texture to it. Let's make that a bit brighter. You can probably see where I'm going with this. Also going to use this color ramp to basically dictate a emission map. And now, hey, hey let's add a bit of color to this. Lava. For the first time, lava that flows with a mesh. What you do with this is kind of the more interesting part, but advecting the coordinates in themselves is pretty good. So there you go. This magnificent tutorial is sponsored by Squarespace, the best place to make a website, hands down, hands on the table. We're talking beautiful templates that you can just click and drag elements around. There are analytics so you know where people are coming from, which is important. You have an asset library in the cloud, which means you don't need to host your own files and then do redirects. They do that for you. And if you're using your website for commercial purposes, making money, selling things, I sell low, I don't know. There is pretty much every payment method under the sun. PayPal, Visa, whatever it is, they can buy whatever it is you're offering. Head over to Squarespace to make a website. And when you are ready to take that thing and launch it, you can use my link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain.